Well, good afternoon. This is the second podcast of the Endurance of Labor Laws. Uh, again, my name is Leslie Sullivan. I am your host for this lovely podcast. And for this episode, I want to go over the specific minimum wages of all the states of the United States. And this is updated as of the 30th of this year in 2021. Oh, sorry, let me go back. Uh, September 30th of 2021. And I had already recorded a couple of different podcasts, but when I went back and listened to them, I did about two or three episodes and was trying to edit them and just listening to them overall to see what I thought of the content. And I thought, you know, I would rather focus on what's positive as opposed to negative because it's very easy to get negative about something that you're passionate about about. And I thought, you know, I would rather have really good things to say than anything slightly negative or pushy, I guess is a, a better way to say it. Because I would rather it be uplifting and that we can always move forward. So I wanted to speak positively about this as opposed to um, it possibly feeling or sounding like a lecture because that is truly not my intention at all because I know that if someone was lecturing me I wouldn't want to listen to them I'd probably turn it off so I thought if this isn't something that I think I would want to listen to then I'm just going to scrap or scratch those episodes and just uh start fresh with a new one so this is a fresh new episode episode 2 and um oh Just uh FYI, uh if you want to call in, that's great. You can reach me at 405-314-1119. Email address is leslie2018sullivan at gmail.com and that is l e s l e y 2018 sullivan s u l l i v a n at gmail.com. That will be my email address until I get an updated one. So, and I've already had some ideas about that, so hopefully that will come to pass very quickly. So, I am looking at the Department of Labor website so it's dol.gov and this was updated its effective date again is September 30th of 2021 so let's see here um Alaska's minimum wage is $10.34 so um i pray that that goes up to $12 cuz my goal would be instead of like trying to force every state to be at $15 an hour. I think that would put too much pressure on our economy to do that. Even though I would love nothing more than for a minimum wage to be way higher cuz in Oklahoma it's 7.25 an hour, which is pathetic in my opinion. Um, but I think if we did it in increments each year, then all the states could be up where they need to be and it wouldn't be such a stressful transition if we just did it year by year. So for example with Alaska with it being $10.34 as of right now, you know, it'd be a little less than 5 years to get up to 15 an hour so that way it's not such a strain on employers because whenever you are doing anything mandate wise where it's federal at the federal level or the state level, it can easily put a strain on the economy and businesses. And the last thing that we want to do is make it so difficult for employers to pay workers that they have to start letting people go because that has what that is what has happened in the past whenever employers or places of business felt the squeeze is what they call it whenever they feel the squeeze from the federal government about taxes or wages or you know you know new laws are coming down the pipeline you know sometimes they let people go because sometimes they can't fiscally afford to do what the federal government is wanting them to do. So this would be a great way to just do an increment so that way it's it's not just intense all at once. It gives employers time to reevaluate their assets, to um allocate assets, you know, do whatever they need to do so that way they don't go out of business and number two, they don't have to fire a bunch of people because that's the last thing we want to do, right? So let's go on to the next state here. Um the next one is Arkansas. Their minimum wage is $11 an hour. So let's pray that it goes up to $12. You know, let's go to a good increment there. Next one is Arizona. They're at $12.15. So 
So let's pray that goes up. I'm going to say let's have that go up to 14 because if we had to go up a dollar be $13 and 15 cents. So let's go ahead and see if we can get that up to $14 an hour. California listed here is at 13, but I think as a state, I think they've already pushed for a higher wage. Now I'm going off just FYI, I'm going off the federal website. So states may have implemented a higher minimum wage between September when this was posted and today. So this, you know, I know I've said this um before in the past, but it's one of those things that once data is posted out there on the internet or you know, however they publish it whether it's internet or in the newspaper, whatever the case may be, once you post data, it is already old data, it's already aged. So it may already not be up to date, but California, they've already up to some of their wages out there. I just don't know the exact amount. And then Colorado is sitting at $12.32. So let's crank that puppy up to $14 an hour. Connecticut is $13 an hour. Let's uh, crank that up to $14 an hour. DC is listed at $15.20. I would say let's go ahead and bump that up to $17 an hour because the District of Columbia is very expensive to live there for sure. Next one is Delaware. They're sitting at $9.25. I say let's bump that up to $11 cuz I think it's easier to do math when it's just 0 0 as opposed to 25 cents, 34 cents, 15 cents. Let's just make it easy to do. That especially makes it easy on taxes as well cuz then you don't have any funky numbers out there. Florida is sitting at $10 an hour. Let's, you know, crank that up to $11. Hawaii, I'm surprised this is so low. They're sitting at $10 and 10 cents. So let's crank that up to $12. Illinois is $11. Let's go up to $12. That'd be awesome. Massachusetts, oh, this is good. They're at $13.50. Thirteen dollars and fifty cents. Let's crank it up to fifteen dollars an hour. I think that'd be great. Maryland, I'm surprised they're a little low here, um, at least from the federal point of view. It's eleven dollars and seventy-five cents. So I say let's make that thirteen an hour. That'd be awesome. Maine, kind of surprised by this, but at the same time, kind of am because it's up in the Northeast. And Maine is sitting at twelve dollars and fifteen cents. So I say let's uh, crank that puppy up to fourteen dollars an hour. And the reason why I'm kind of surprised it's still that low is because Whenever you're living on the coast, it's very expensive to live there. And then the further north you go up, it gets more expensive to live there. So I'm surprised it is still that low for Maine. But also their population is not as populated as New York or California, so maybe that's why they're thinking they don't need to raise that rate because population density does have a big it is a big factor in terms of minimum wage and wages for a state and for their economy. Next up is Michigan. I'm kind of surprised this is so pathetically low. This is at nine dollars and sixty-five cents. They need to be up. They need to be way higher than that. But you know, let's just go for like eleven dollars an hour. The reason why I'm surprised by Michigan is that Michigan is kind of a funky state in that when I initially think of Michigan, I think you know Republican, uh, just because the people I know from there. um some of the things you hear about their laws but then sometimes Michigan they vote in some really weird democrats and i mean crazy liberal nutbag democrats like they're not even just your regular blue dog democrats like i miss the plain jane normal democrats like the kind of democrats that would have voted for president kennedy you know just they they're just regular everyday workers whether they're white collar blue collar but that they don't have this socialist agenda is the thing. The Democrat party has kind of been hijacked by some really nutty liberals cuz you know it's interesting is the Democrat party it used to just be Democrats like you didn't have these nutty socialist or liberals in there. And I I really kind of feel sorry for the Democrat party even though I'm a Republican. I feel sorry for the Democrat party because it's being hijacked by really weird people and it's and they're trying to change the the uh the mindset and the complete theology and the agenda of the democratic party and i don't agree with that cuz most democrats are not liberals they're not socialists you know they just really are more leaning towards unions and you know better workers rights and, you know they're they're kind of more mainstream democrats they're they're kind of very similar to republicans it's just there's just certain things they're slightly different on Excuse me, and 
So I'm just kind of surprised by that low number in Michigan because sometimes they have voted in some really weird people. And I just think, you know, considering how weird some of their people are, I'm I'm just surprised that they haven't raised that rate. So, you know, hopefully this is outdated and they've already updated it. So, anyway, next one is um I think this is Minnesota. Yeah. Um it is $10.08, so I say let's bump that up to $11. Next one is Missouri. I'm kind of not surprised this is low, but I'm surprised they're higher than Oklahoma. They're at $10.30, so let's crank that up to $12. I think that would be great. Next one is Montana. I'm not surprised by this at all. Um they're at $8.75. I'm going to say let's raise that to $10 an hour. I'm guessing the reason why it's so low is because the population is not as uh, dense and there's a lot of land up there and it kind of seems like whenever there's more farming communities they it's like the state or the economy doesn't really want to pay people what they're worth because they don't view farming the same as like an office job which I completely disagree with because to me labor is labor pay them a decent wage and to me 8.75 an hour is not decent at all next one is Nevada I'm surprised this is low. It's at nine dollars. I say let's get let's do ten dollars an hour. Next one is New Jersey. This is kind of pathetic. It's sitting at twelve dollars an hour. Considering how expensive New Jersey is, like to live there and their real estate, they should be at like I was gonna say fifty an hour. <laughs> you know, that's like insane. But considering um, how expensive it is over there, uh, when I say fifty, I mean like five zero. But that obviously is way 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 too much. But Um probably crank it up to 13 an hour and I'm kind of surprised it's not already at 15 or 16 or 17. Next one is New Mexico. I'm not surprised by this. They're sitting at $10.50. And you know, New Mexico is kind of it's a poor state, but it's not as bad as others, but it's not known for being wealthy. So I'm kind of not surprised by that that number there. Um oh, I am wrong. The previous one, I am wrong. Okay. The uh one that was at $9, that's actually Nebraska. I get Nevada and Nebraska mixed up cuz it's just giving me abbreviations. Um Nebraska now I'm not surprised that it's only $9 um because it's more kind of farming and so they tend to not pay well. Um now we're doing Nevada and now I'm surprised it's still this low. It has two different rates, 8.75 an hour and 9.75 an hour, so I say let's crank that up to $11 or $12 an hour. Next one is New York. I'm kind of not surprised by this, but at the same time I am. It's 12.50 an hour. To me that's extremely low considering how expensive it is to live in New York, but at the same time, New York to me doesn't really come across as really caring about people. So, I I kind of just think I'm I'm not completely surprised by that. Um next one is Ohio at 8.80. I'm kind of disappointed by that. I I hope it goes up to $10 an hour. Next one is Oregon. They're sitting at $12.75, so let's hope and pray that goes up to 14 an hour. Next one is Rhode Island. Oh, I'm kind of surprised it's this low. It's sitting at 11.50 an hour. And so let's hope and pray it goes up to 13 an hour. I think that would be great. Next one is South Dakota. I'm not surprised at all by this. It's $9.45. Again, it's not an an extremely industrial state and um there's a lot of farming up there and a lot of land. And so, you less population, they're really not going to want to pay their workers as much as if you have a more densely populated city and state. Um so, kind of sad with that. Virginia, kind of surprised that it is this low. It's sitting at $9.50. So, let's hope that goes up to 10.50 or 11. Next one's Vermont. This is a little sad. It's sitting at $11.75. So, let's hope and pray it goes up to 12 or 13 because it is very expensive to live in Vermont. But again, it doesn't have a huge population. It's not very industrial. Um I don't know what kind of farming stuff they have up there, but it's not known for like factories or you know city slickers or anything like that. And when I say city slickers, I mean like Wall Street, you know, that kind of thing. Next one is Washington State. Well, this is good. They're listed at $13.69, so let's hope that goes up to 15 an hour. Next one is West Virginia. This is pathetic. It's sitting at $8.75, so let's hope that goes up to 10.50 or so. Who knows, maybe even 12. I think that would be better for West Virginia. Next one, I think this is Virgin Islands. I've never seen that abbreviation, but they're sitting at 10.50. Next one is Guam. Um, they're sitting at 8.75, which is kind of pathetic, but at the same time I'm not surprised with that. Um, 
but these numbers could very well be completely different based on what the state requires. So let's say, for example, you know, we're looking at California. So let me look up California's uh, minimum wage. And I bet it's gone up since then. So let me look up California minimum wage 2021. Oh, they it already went up to um took effect to 14. Let's see here. Yeah, they already went up, so that's good. Um that is so interesting that Oh, I'm seeing. Okay, this is what I was talking about earlier in a in a different podcast. Okay. So, um here's the thing. Um I'd give an example of when I lost my job. Well, I quit my job. Um this was several years ago and my employer refused to pay me my last check. Stupidly. They were morons and they were very crooked and corrupt. So I, I reported them to the IRS and to the Department of Labor. And so the Department of Labor contacted them. My employer refused to work with them on getting me my check. Oh, and here's another shady thing. My employer wanted me to send them money in order for them to send me my check, which was totally shady. I was like, I'm not mailing you money. I'm not sending you anything. You're supposed to give me my check. Like, this isn't tick for tack, but that was another thing. They were just trying to be mean again. And there was a reason why I left. It was a really bad workplace. It takes a lot to get me to leave, but here's the thing. So, the Department of Labor sent a federal agent to my employer. And my employer, the pompous, arrogant tics that they were at the time, who knows, maybe they've turned over a new leaf, I hope so. Um, but being the pompous, arrogant tics that they were at the time, they just told this federal agent and it is a federal agent because this is a federal agency they told this federal agent oh well we'll think about it and we'll get back with you and so this federal agent told them i don't think you understand i'm not leaving until you give me her check so you can either write it out or you can print it out and i'm going to wait in the lobby but again i'm not leaving until you give me her wages this isn't up to you this this is not an option that you can get out of you have to pay her wages So they felt the heat, good. I'm glad they did. And so um the federal agent, she called me, she told me all this, and I just busted out laughing because I wasn't surprised at all. Like we ended up laughing about because it was so cocky and arrogant of these people to act like that. And so um she said, "Well, I just want you to know that you know, you may have been paid way more, which I was, but the federal government can only guarantee minimum wage." So even though I made way more than minimum wage, the federal government if when they go after somebody for wages, they can only get what is minimum at that time. You know when you were working. So at that time, I literally only got what was minimum wage at that time, which I think was 7.25 an hour, which was pathetic, but at least it was something. But see, here's the thing. States they can raise that rate on their own. So even though the federal minimum wage is $7.25, different states can fluctuate their minimum wage. Now, this is not waitress pay, which I think is pathetic about waitress pay. I think they should get paid minimum and then additional if that's what their employer chooses to do. But I think minimum wage, it should just be across the board what it's supposed to be and waitresses should not be getting less than that. I think that's really horrible to do that cuz I've worked as a waitress before when I was in between jobs and I needed money for rent. It was a backbreaking job. It was so exhausting. Like it was worse than retail because you're lifting all these trays, you're you're having to wait on all these people and if you have to wait on a huge family, it was so brutal. Like I remember one table I waited on, the the parents felt sorry for me. because it was me and this guy that were supposed to take care of this huge table it was maybe like 15 20 people well he ditched me he totally ditched me and the parents were really irritated that guy did that cuz it was one of my first nights to work there i mean i did the best i could and they ticked me really good they bought extra food you know they they felt sorry for me and you know they knew i was trying but i tell you what when i got home i was so tired when i got home I didn't even have the energy to take my shoes off. I just collapsed on my bed and went to sleep. 
And I don't even remember when I woke up the next day. I was so physically exhausted because I worked a long shift and I was closing and it was just really rough. And I remember thinking these wages are pathetic considering how much work I'm doing like just physical labor. I was like, "You man, give me a shovel and I'll dig a ditch." It was that bad. <laughs> because not only are you doing physical labor in a way when you're being a waitress, but um you're also having to deal with customers and it was just weird it was just really bizarre but um anyway so it says here now the first column i read from on the DLO website it says greater than federal minimum wage so the those wages are greater than federal minimum wage which is 725 right the second column says equals federal minimum wage of 725 so All these other states are literally as of September 30th of this year are still at 725. That would be Georgia, Iowa, Indiana, Idaho, Kansas, Kentucky, North Carolina, North Dakota, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Texas, Utah, Wisconsin, Wyoming, and I think that's Puerto Rico if I'm not mistaken. It's interesting when you're trying to well trying to think of all the places we have for the United States. You don't see their abbreviations very often. And then they have a third column that says no minimum wage required, which I find that very interesting and the column there is Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina and Tennessee. So I did I was not aware that there was no minimum wage required for those states. So let me look at minimum wage for Tennessee and see what it says for 2021. and it says it says it's 725 so i don't know why it is, it has that third column and it says no minimum wage required i find that odd so maybe this just hasn't been updated but it should have been but anyway so let's see here Oh, well, this is really good. It says additional minimum wage information. And this is straight from the DLO website. This is really good to read because this helps you understand your state that you live in, but also the federal government. So it says here the state minimum wage rate requirements or lack thereof are generally controlled by legislative activities within the, within the individual states, which is true. Federal minimum wage law supersedes state minimum wage laws where the federal minimum wage is greater than the state minimum wage. In those states where the state minimum wage is greater than the federal minimum wage, the state minimum minimum wage prevails. Well, that's hard to say over and over. And so let's see here. But uh okay, it says here there are 29 states plus the District of Columbia, Guam and the Virgin Islands. I forgot about them. The Virgin Islands. um with minimum wage rates set higher than the federal minimum wage there are also 16 states plus Puerto, Puerto Rico that has a minimum wage requirement that is the same as the federal minimum wage requirement the remaining five states do not have an established minimum wage requirement oh that's why so okay that makes more sense i'm learning something new about that so those states that were in that third column that we talked about if they don't have a state requirement then it falls back on the federal rate. I'm kind of surprised those states, the states of those five don't have a minimum wage requirement because usually states like to be responsible for their citizens, so I'm kind of surprised by that. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Oh, here we go. This I did not know this. So the District of Columbia has the highest minimum wage of $15.20 an hour. Note There are 18 states that currently have scheduled annual adjustments for their minimum wages based on varying formulas. Most of these increases occur around January 1st. Individuals should consult the relevant state labor offices for information on the particular formula used to adjust the state minimum wage. So, um basically, oh, Florida is one of those too. I'm just looking at all the states listed that they have a a scheduled annual adjustment but some of those were still really low. I'm kind of surprised by that. So those uh, 18 states 
that say they have a scheduled annual adjustment for their minimum wage and they they have a varying formula is Alaska, Arizona, California, Colorado, District of Columbia, Florida, Maine, Minnesota, Missouri, Montana, Nevada, New Jersey. Um oh they listed that state twice. New York, Ohio, Oregon, South Dakota and Washington. But see here's here's what I don't like about some of this is that they have these increments but they're still low. They I mean it, it's still not livable. I guess I'm kind of surprised that 18 states have um scheduled annual adjustments for the minimum wage within their state. I would kind of want to know what those formulas are if I was living in one of those states because none of these wages are livable. That's the thing. Like for example, New York super expensive, super super expensive to live in. Again, their minimum wage is 1250. Let me double check one more website and see. Just see if it went up at all. New York minimum wage. Okay, so New York went oh is now 15 an hour. But that's still really low. That's that's the thing. Sorry, I don't mean to be quiet. I was reading this. Oh, well, that's for 2022. Okay, so as of right now, it's 1320. But still, like 15 like that's a good starting point, but that that's not livable for New York. And then for California, it's 13 on here and we already looked at the website confirming their rate, but it's just kind of like if it's not livable then that's the problem that's my point and you know here we're this so like in Oklahoma we are kind of used to really low not so good wages um really the only way for years that you could make good money in Oklahoma was to be a doctor a lawyer an engineer or if you had some kind of booming business that nobody else knew about or if you were a farmer and you owned a lot of land and an example of that is express employment services that guy his offices are based out of Oklahoma and he has huge ranch out here out in Oklahoma he has a lot of cattle a lot of land but see here's the thing that business grew over time it wasn't just like overnight but the thing is is that Oklahoma is still known for cheap labor and you know yes we have a lower standard of living in terms of like money wise but still it just because it doesn't cost as much to rent an apartment in Oklahoma that doesn't mean that people shouldn't make more per hour per year because that affects their gross income before taxes hit right so like for example if you go look for an apartment most apartment complexes when you're filling out an application they're looking at your gross income meaning before taxes are taken out to see if you qualify or not to see if you qualify to live there because you have to make a certain amount of money in order to live at most places because they want to make sure that you have enough money coming in to pay the rent. Well, what I don't agree with is they're going off of your gross income, which is before taxes. Well, you're not paying rent off of gross income. You're paying it after taxes are taken out. And plus, taxes vary from person to person. So, if I had to guess, cuz I've worked in property management a little bit, I if I'm going off of what I kind of know on this if I remember correctly the reason why they go off gross income is because it's just a flat rate for your wages like they know okay you're making 45k a year we really don't care how much is taken out in taxes we just know you we we know you're going to make this amount but that still doesn't make sense in terms of bills cuz I I've met and seen people that have lost their home their apartment and they they made way more than me like it really matters their tax bracket and what do they owe like what are their debts that kind of thing 
So, now we'll say this, just because someone has debt, that doesn't mean that should be used against them. Because people still need a place to live. So, whatever debt someone has, that's their business because they're they're going to pay their rent, they're going to pay their utilities. Like that comes first and then debts come second or third, right? But it's just kind of, one of those things that if it's not a livable wage, even before taxes are taken out, that is a big problem. And so typically what they're talking about when they're talking about raise the minimum wage is they're talking about at the federal level because sometimes the states they don't want to crank that rate up. And like for example, with Oklahoma, it's been at 7 725 for a long time. Like I remember when I was 16, oh my goodness, that was 21 years ago. <laughs> Um I was making like 6 something an hour because that was minimum wage. So in like 21 years it's only gone up pennies. That's pathetic. It should have gone up a dollar a year or 50 cents a year, but they haven't done it. It is absolutely pathetic. And so, you know, even though I'm a Republican, I do agree that minimum wage needs to be higher. and the state requirements need to be higher. I think it needs to be compatible with real estate because that's the biggest thing because like for example, where I live, my apartment, it would probably cost cuz I looked this up. My rent is 850 a month, which is awesome. And it's a very nice apartment, but if I was to have this exact same apartment in California, it would easily cost 3 to 4,000 a month. That is insane. Now, do you really think someone on minimum wage out in California, whether it's 13 or 14 an hour, do you really think they're going to be able to afford that kind of apartment? The short answer is no, and it's very unfortunate. But that's just kind of what's been going on with that. And so, you know, that's kind of where I really wish more people would wake up to what's happening in their state. because what's happening in your state makes you even more aware of what's happening at a federal level because you you need to understand and you need to know what's happening at a state level before you can really understand everything that's coming down the pipeline from the federal government because it's one of those things like I really like what Joel Osteen says where he says you need to bloom where you're planted so at the moment I'm in Oklahoma So it's important for me to know the ins and outs of Oklahoma legislation even just from a basic you know knowledge which is great I love that cuz you know I don't know everything I'm not a lawyer but in terms of how the laws affect me and affect my life my business my income I need to know these things because then if a federal law is passed that interferes with my rights at a state level then it's going to interfere with my rights at a federal level and minimum wage is one of those rights because i guarantee you there are a ton of employers that can afford to pay way more than minimum wage but they refuse to do it like that money is going somewhere someone's making that money and it's not always the worker it's not always the people that are doing the grunt work as they say so i mean i'm not a fan of strong or strong arming uh employers are twisting their arm however they need to get with the times you know they wouldn't like it if they were making minimum wage hardly able to pay their rent if they need to buy a car they can't hardly buy a car and if they do buy a car it's probably not going to be a good one it's going to be a clunker and it's going to be very difficult to get to and from work and that's not even including health insurance or any medications that the, that the worker is taking I mean it's just it's and that's not even I'm not even thinking about food and then gasoline for the car much less having kids and then trying to have a 401k trying to save money for retirement I mean who saves for retirement when you're living on minimum wage that's insane it it just doesn't really make sense so if we if we want our workers to be more financially stable and to have a better life here and now and in the future we need to raise the minimum wage requirement by quite a bit even if it's just a dollar a year whatever that increment may be 
it does need to be increased because like for for example state of Oklahoma if we went up to 15 an hour that would raise our rate by seven dollars and was that 75 cents that is quite a hike but just think about all the years that have gone by that they didn't raise the minimum wage in Oklahoma they didn't care to do it because they're falling back on on the on the federal guideline so when you hear minimum wage when you hear that ball being bounced around in the media more than likely they are referring to the federal requirement and that's really important because look at this way if the federal government can get that wage to go higher i think what would be good is if if the federal minimum wage requirement went up by a dollar a year so instead of being 725 it would be 825 and the following year it would be 925 you know really kind of do it in increments cuz then the states that are already above 725 they don't really need to worry about it what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the other states that typically have more poverty and more welfare programs we're trying to get it so their workers make more money so that they don't have to rely on the government for a paycheck that's the thing like if i want what's best for my neighbor i don't want them to be on food stamps i want them to make good money like i would want nothing more than for everyone i know to be a millionaire or a billionaire and to do really well in life and to never have to you know accept a handout but if anything be a blessing to other people i would rather have that than have a bunch of people making the bare minimum and the bare minimum is not even enough to survive really it just isn't so but that is uh today's podcast a little serious but also i think it's good to know what are the current rates in your state so again the rates i gave were from the federal government webpage the department of labor But if you want to know your individual state's rate, you need to check your state's Department of Labor page. And then also, if you're one of those 18 states that has that formula that varies from year to year in terms of the rate, I would look that up because, you know, as a voting citizen, I would want to know what that is because I didn't know they did that. I'm 37. You know, all these years i've been a citizen you know a voting citizen since the age of 18 i didn't know they had these formulas in other states that somewhat determined their minimum wage so if i lived in one of those states i would want to know what that formula is and how can we get it to be higher that's what i would do cuz i look at it this way if if it would be very difficult for me to live on minimum wage or if it would not even be possible to live off of minimum wage then why would i think it's okay for somebody else to have that kind of pay i look at it this way if it's good enough for me to make 55k a year or whatever amount i make now then it should be okay for somebody else to make that i mean i'm not saying that the common rate should be 55k but i'm just saying that If it's okay for me to be successful and that's what I strive for, then it should be acceptable and okay for other people. And you know, everything should be a stepping stone. Like at one point I was making minimum wage, but that was years ago. And I knew in my head as a as a young person as as a teeny bopper that I did not want to stay at that rate even though that's just what they valued me at. I knew I was way more qualified than what they were paying me because I really studied in school. So I thought, okay, I'm going to be really prepared for college and all that good stuff. But again, some of the problems with wages comes down to what your age is. Cuz I know that I got discriminated against all the time for being young. Because there's this stupid mindset um in Oklahoma and I bet it mostly affects um states that are in the Bible Belt. They kind of have this theology I don't know why but they have this stupid theology that if you're older you must be wiser and only older people can make more money or people that are married should make the money not the people who are single well that's discrimination based on age and marital status your age and your marital status have nothing to do with what you should be getting paid getting paid your wages has to deal with your experience what the job entails and what your skill sets are But I tell you what, I got discriminated against all the time, especially as a teenager and in my 20s. 
It wasn't until I got into my 30s that that discrimination went down a little bit. And I was thankful for that because it was getting so old. I mean, I could just totally tell in an interview when someone was looking down at me because I was younger than them. And it's usually by people in their 50s or 60s or 70s and what I so wanted to say but I didn't. <laughs> what I so wanted to say was, you know, do you remember being my age and you didn't like being discriminated against? You didn't like being told that you don't deserve to make that kind of money just because of what year you were born in? Like that is absolutely ridiculous. Like a job is a job. To me, it it doesn't matter what age you are cuz age is just a number. It doesn't determine your education or your qualifications. It's just a number. Are people that are older sometimes more qualified? Yes, but I've met stupid people of all ages. <laughs> It's really sad. I've met dumb really young people. I've met dumb people that are my age. I've met dumb people that are way older than me. But I've also met really smart people of all ages. I mean, I've met you know people in their 20s. I'm just like, "Man, they're smart." I hope and pray they go places and they do really well and I pray they don't get discriminated against because they're in their 20s. You know, I hope that that they do make a lot of money because they deserve it. They're really sharp, really brilliant and they really want to work hard. So, that's just kind of been my experience in that, but we'll say this, I never gave up. Even though I was discriminated against, I wasn't always treated very well in interviews for a whole lot of reasons, none of which were legal, but Um it taught me a lot and I learned to have a thick skin and to just let things roll off my back. And I think that experience really kind of prepared me, you know, for podcasts like this so that I can relay information to other people and just say let it go. You know, know your rights for sure, but knowing your rights should not give you emotional ammo to be irritated at people it's just to educate and that you know where you stand and you know what your rights are so that way if ever you have to go to court you're going to be way more prepared than if you didn't know that that's the thing cuz sometimes you might have to go to court whether it's at a state level or a federal level it's just one of those things but you know when you know your rights and you have an understanding of it then it's not as intimidating and you have courage you know you have that bravery in you that was always there but now you really know that you are brave because now you're confident in your bravery and you have confidence in what you know and in what you do for a living and you know that your work is good and true that's the thing as workers right you know that what you're doing is good and true and you just want to be treated fairly you know as a worker i've never asked to be pampered. I mean, I've never asked to be given a glass of wine at the end of the week. You know, I've never asked for a bunch of cheese. I've never been unrealistic about my job or my wages or things like that. If anything, I have always been realistic, but it's been my boss or my employer or the the owner of the company that was not realistic about how talented and how hard working their employees are. and they just didn't really want to pay them what they're worth and you know what they would lose employees and then they would blame the employee and it's like no most of the time when people quit or leave a job it's because of their supervisor or because of the company there's something going on because if an employee is treated right and and they feel appreciated and they know they're appreciated then even if there's tough times at the job they'll stay because they know they can tough it out and that their boss has their back and their boss is nice and kind and they enjoy where they work but if if people don't know that they're respected or appreciated and they're and if they know they're not being paid what they're supposed to be getting paid that's a problem that is a problem so um i think one of the biggest things is just know who you are know your your talents and gifts And you know, my piece of advice for this podcast is I would make a list of every job you've had, whether you like the job or not, whether it lasted a day, a year, a month, a year. I would make a list of every job you've ever had, write down the job title you were given, and then underneath each job, 
that you've had, I would write down everything you did at that job from the moment you set foot on the property and clocked in, like write down or type up, clocked in, and then write down or type out every little thing you did because every little thing you did is part of your job. And it's technically a skill set. And those are building blocks and stepping stones to a better career. So for example, something as simple as clocking in and out, well that is time management. There are a lot of people that underestimate the importance of time management. And also, when you understand your your time on the clock and off the clock, you tend to understand your wages better. You are way more uh, knowledgeable about your vacation pay, your sick leave and things of that nature, and those are things that everyone needs to be aware of so that way number 1, you don't get gypped by your boss or your employer. And I'm not saying they're all bad, but sometimes they do try and pull stuff. And other other times You know, it's just good to have general knowledge of where you stand with stuff like that. And plus also when you list all that stuff out, you will see just how much work you've done. You know, this is especially good to do if you're feeling like you're in a rut and you feel like you're not going anywhere. It's good to take stock of all the good work you've done in your life. Even if you didn't enjoy it, you still put in the time. You still did the work. You still did the labor. And to me, That's a good thing. It is such a good thing to know the work that you did because it was not done in vain. And also you pay taxes on that work. So that's super important too. So I think it's good to make a list of all those things because you know a light bulb might come on in your head and you might think, "Wow, I really have accomplished a lot in my life and I want something even more." And so then it might really encourage you to look at a better job and a higher wage. and that is a great thing to do. Like whenever I'm looking for new work, I always try and look at jobs that make 5k to 10k more than what I'm currently making. Even if I don't have the skill set, even if I don't have the qualifications, those are the jobs I'm going to be looking looking for because that's where I want to go. I want to keep moving up. I don't want to go backwards, I want to go forwards. And if you list everything out, then you get a complete picture of who you are. as a worker and as a person and you get to see all the good things that you've done with your life up until that moment in time and it's just nice to feel complete. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's a good feeling and I didn't realize how good that would feel because I'm not really a feelings kind of person. I don't like to talk about my feelings, like I don't even really like to cry and I know I'm a woman, but I try to only allow myself to cry maybe once or twice a year because I don't like to waste my time on emotions, but it is important to know that you have value and that in itself feels good. And when something feels good, it feels good and it releases good hormones and good feelings into your bloodstream. And that affects your brain, that affects your mood, it affects all these things. So, I think it's a good thing to really know who you are as a person, especially if you have not taken stock of your life in a long time or if you never have, this is the perfect time to do so. The perfect time. So but I will uh in this podcast from now and I pray that everyone is happy, healthy, whole, that you're very prosperous, that you love and enjoy your job and that wherever you are right now, just know that keep pushing forward and you are worth it. You have value and you are important and we need you in our society. And I pray that you're doing very 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 well in life. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. God bless.